个宇宙书，宇宙书，宇宙书，打，打也是宇宙吧？嗯，首先宇宙书是不怕任何战士的，是就是奴隶战啊、嗯，不管是奴隶战、土豪战，它都是有稍有一定优势啊、嗯。那对方这个骑士是一个中术的骑士吧？啊啊不不不是，这是这这是,这是,这,是这是中枢骑士吗？是中枢吧？是中枢。嗯、呃，这个其实带了很多的。对，就凭他一个漏江，我们就可以认定他是一个中枢骑士。但有可能会是一个宇宙吗？有。宇宙啊，你是说还有一种是宇宙骑士吧？有可能，因为他带了一个叫嚣。对，就是就是这个叫嚣比较不太寻常。看来有没有重样的东西。对。哇，飞刀动员！这里肯定是上飞刀了，对方刚好解不动。是，最后应该上一个，呃，应该会卖一个铜须，可能上黑石摊贩比较好。黑石摊贩的话，身材不太好。或者考虑到对面小伙可能有动员，直接过一张牌。啊、呃，也可能，他过牌完全可以，因为有地狱烈焰嘛。对他那个摊贩跟那个铜须还有一个配合。我觉得还是过牌吧，直接地狱烈焰是。术士打骑士还是要有手牌压手牌优势的，有手牌优势嘛？嗯，而且他的铜那个铜须现在在手上。嗯，骑士二费上一个飞刀，这边肯定有一个强烈的警戒。嗯、三费是不是会上一个动员？他可能判断对面是一个佛祖骑。对，有用的法术不多。腐蚀术法。他觉得对面是佛祖骑的话，会不会选第一个呢？第三，呃，第三个吧。佛祖骑第一个。其实这个腐蚀术有些时候非常的恶心，就是说，就是让你打我一回伤害，下回那个怪就死了。啊，他选择的是尽量的铺场，拼点的话，看一下对方的职业啊，你看到了，哦、还是看不出到底是宇宙期还是中术期。但我觉得还是，反都是偏中术的吧，偏。马上马上就过来了。哎，这个飞刀加作战动员的 combo。哇哇，不是吧？一刀都飞不中，打脸就赢了。一刀都飞不中，那这个地狱链是不是可以省下？可以用一个爆破啊，但是爆破可能他会惧怕对面这个奉献吗？奉献，我觉得也不亏吧，对方交个奉献，这里打爆破可以打一个地狱呃打小鬼。他现在认同对面八成是一个带肉浆的佛祖旗，是的，带肉浆的佛祖旗。那看到寡看到寡了应该。带肉浆的佛祖旗也有也有、嗯，现在最近有人带双肉浆，嗯。奉献来了，他他这里交奉献是一点都不赚的，应该会选择上一个砍一刀就再把场面全部清上去，让愚人骑士能够活下来。这、嗯、飞狐就很难受了。飞狐这个术士是没怎么过到牌，宇宙术。首先，飞狐现在就是不知道对面是什么版本。这个青蛙其实也是成功战场了。是。报告加个叫嚣，是不是应该？啊、哦，他要上淤泥吗？这是。他就是把这个玉泥先先清了,了，然后看能出一个最好出一个这个。哇！第二个愚人骑士，那应该还是好的，撞一下地狱链直接清了。嗯，直接一个地狱链就可以全解。是。伊、啊、瑟拉，宇宙术带伊瑟拉的，不是特别多、嗯之。之前我们飞虎聊的时候，我看他打电话，就是说伊瑟拉的理解就是说。在对德的时候，如果对面空场出过伊瑟拉，基本就赢了。嗯，就打德上伊瑟拉特别的强。对，对于四杠十二，即即使你沉默了，也没有任何办法。还是偏向于一个打后期的一个思路，因为九费其实已经有大王了。对，他这套牌没有那个费尔根，呃，没有恶魔体系，也没有费尔根。对。现在蝶梦这套牌还是看不出来是一个什么形态。蝶梦这套牌总的来说就是不能给他一个很大的压力，就。也就这波解了之后，有地狱烈焰留着解场的话，现在没有什么压力。好，那这对面拍了个大地，军需官，有个报告军需官。我们现在还没有看到一个重叠的卡组吧？是是是，没有看到。这套术士是有三个，有一个恶魔之怒，一个地狱烈焰，一个暗影烈焰，还有扭曲虚空的话，有一些人带，有一些人不带，有可能会有扭曲虚空。哇，这里有一个 combo 叫做同虚幺三零，同虚阿古斯，<笑> TC, 同虚雷诺五二零，<笑>这这这边几张牌全部都是战吼，除了欢笑的姐妹。对，而且打骑士的话，这个 combo 是很容易放得出来的。的这伊瑟拉应该是被平等敲一下，是，然后再上一个淤泥吧。对方的 A O E 应该是没有什么太多有效的 A O E 啊，暗影烈焰你得先上个怪。好，好拉淤泥了。看到有悲剧要发生了吗？要不要用
All right, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another day of the Hearthstone Gold Series. Gold Series is one of the biggest tournament series in China. Features a bunch of different games, and we are here to cover those all for you guys on HSCN. Now, this is Group D of what is actually a massive eight-group, uh, you know, series. Here for Hearthstone, we've had a bunch of players uh, qualify from being uh, popular streamers. We had qualify from minor tournaments, major tournaments, and uh, of course from team stories. So it's like uh, there's uh, pretty much all of the best players from China being represented here. And of course, the four players in Group D, which is what we're broadcasting here today, are Zi Hao. Uh, from Team Celestial. He's the guy on the top half of your screen. Uh, then Ice Fox, a uh, player for OMG. He's the player on the bottom part of your screen. Then we have Nightwalk, player for World Elite, and Lovely Chook, player for Newbie. And uh, those are all the players here. Uh, and uh, of course, you can see the two players on your screen are Zi Hao on the top and Ice Fox on the bottom. Zi Hao is playing. Um, your pretty standard, oh, I guess it's not necessarily your standard, uh, but it's it's a tempo version of Paladin, not your secret Paladin, but it's got things like um, Murloc Knights, and it's got uh, the Voidus in there that's going to help you with some tempo, killing off some minions. And he is playing that against Reno Lock. So you can see Reno Jackson in the hand. It's going to take him up all the way back up to 30, and I think he's just going to play it down right now and go for a 22-point heal. If he doesn't, that is very, very greedy. Um, so I think what he might do instead is play Bram the uh, and just heal for 8. Yeah, so Bram, heal for 8 off the refreshment vendor, and it only triggers... Wait, it triggers, triggers it for both players. Yeah, so both players will get... Uh, eight points of healing. Uh, I feel like that may have been better for the Paladin, though. However, uh, it looks like Ice Fox is pretty much banking on the fact that uh, he doesn't have, uh, or that his opponent doesn't have very much uh, card draw. However, he is sadly mistaken in that fact, and now he'll be able to get even more card draw with essentially three card draw, three cards drawn because lovely you. Um, you draw the first card, which is Solemn Vigil, and you draw two more cards off of it. So that one card represents the next two cards. and Depends on how you want to think of it. But yeah, there comes the Sol Solemn Vigil, and of course, right into a Shielded Minibot. Uh, do you want to play that now, though? I think the answer is, of course, yes. I mean, it's going to die anyway, but at least it's going to take up a bunch of time. Now, this is where so much of the value comes off of Reno Lock. He's going to be able to put down... His uh, Jaraxxus right now, because it's just such a good turn, there's little pressure on the... There's almost no pressure on the board. And uh, his opponent doesn't really have the opportunity to do anything, which is... Um, uh, there's, there's not a whole lot you can do. Oh, wait, yes, there is. <laughs> Turns out that Voidus is pretty good at killing off big weapons, and there goes Jaraxxus's weapon. Uh, does anybody actually know what Jaraxxus's weapon is called? Uh, I think it, it definitely has a name, but I am not one of those nerds that knows it. So if you guys can help me out, that would be great. Either way, I uh, uh, definitely think that was a, a, it was a questionable decision to play Jaraxxus there because A, you don't get all the health from Reno, but B, I, I think Jihao um, was starting to maybe come back with a little bit of tempo on board, and it was getting a little bit, uh, a little bit rough there for Ice Fox. So Ice Fox pretty much had to say, look, I need to be able to do stuff on the board you know who does stuff on the board Jaraxxus so that's exactly what we saw uh, happen there now two cards that you really have to deal with six six and five five but of course that Sylvanas is a uh, kind of a nightmare however uh the, the the problem the dilemma right now is hey we need to kill off Sylvanas so he's gonna go ahead kill off Sylvanas and then play it right into Tyrion Forgering which should be pretty good um given that uh, you know the um Divine Shield is actually going to be pretty difficult to pop. I think you have to use Demon Wrath here, if I'm not mistaken, uh, depending on, of course, on what he draws. Draws right into Dr. Boom. So you can actually uh, Dr. Boom and then Demon Wrath kill off both the Boom bots. It does deal two damage to Dr. Boom, but it has a chance of killing off Tyrion Forgering. Instead, he's going to do it the other way around, which is the safe way to go about it. And, of course, this will... Uh, 
destroy the paladin's weapon, but it will give him another one. The 5-3 Ashbringer. I remember the first time I found the uh, Ashbringer in Diablo. I was like, wait a second, I've seen this card in Hearthstone. I was like, okay, I probably have my orders wrong in there. And interesting to see that Dr. Boom played before the Keeper of Oldemon. Uh, that's kind of questionable, given that, you know, that's, that's a lot of damage just to take, you know, for free. So, might be a little bit interesting, but either way, um, you are going to see both sides trade themselves off into everything. I'm not sure about the Boombot trades initially. Uh, you kind of want to save your face, but this should be a good Reno turn. Yeah, you're down to 5 HP, and you definitely need to get that health back. Is he really thinking about not playing Reno this turn? I, you, you can play Reno at the same time, but if you don't play Reno, that is a, a little bit questionable. But yeah, I gotta go ahead. It's only a 10 health heal, but it does put Jaraxxus all the way back up to full, and this is a very scary board uh, to deal with. So this is definitely a Keeper of Uldemon turn. Uh, the only problem is that I think he's going to have to take that 8 damage to face and just kill off Dr. Boom by itself. Yeah, because uh, it does die to that Ashbringer. That Ashbringer. Decides to leave the Dr. Boom up, and that's actually kind of interesting. Oh, perfect turn for Avoidus. Uh, unfortunately, he's going to get the uh, world's second saddest Twilight Drake. Uh, but more importantly, he takes out that... Ashbringer, and that's going to be where the real value comes from. Now, this is pretty much game over for um, for Lovely Chook because he, uh, or not Lovely Chook, for Jihao, uh, because he has precisely zero options. Doomsayer, even the Doomsayer wouldn't have been a good way to get out of there. But uh, yeah, that's the end of the game. GG. And uh, Jihao will drop game number one to Icebox. Now, Icefox is a player that I've actually been a pretty big fan of for, I want to say a while just to sound super hipster, but basically since the end of last year, uh, he played in WCA and in, um, uh, I believe he actually got, uh, plays pretty highly in there, like, uh, Fifth through eighth, if what I'm looking at is correct. So, uh, actually, pretty cool to see somebody that did very, very well in the qualifiers. Actually, had a decent run at trying to qualify to represent China at the Hearthstone World Championships, but he unfortunately placed uh, fifth and sixth place finish uh, there. So, couldn't quite represent China at Worlds, but. That's going to do it for our first game in this best of five. Let's see what they have to say. Of course, this will be in Chinese, but hopefully, uh, hopefully it's still meaningful. Hello,是一个属于炉石选手来说的话，年纪比较重要的比赛，然后就是能参加这样的比赛比较激动，也比较开心，然后能取得一个好名次的话就更好了。嗯，我比较喜欢玩术士吧，因为术士的形态比较多
Not enough people watch esports VODs nowadays, because they are just as representative. So that was actually really, really cool to, to watch that series. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch it. Not enough people watch esports VODs nowadays, because they are just as fun as live events. You get a chance to experience part of history, and it is so cool. So definitely make sure uh, to go do that. But uh, of course, in the meantime, let's go ahead and get into the game that we're playing right now. It's Agro Shaman. For Ice Fox, and he is playing that against Shihao's Tempo Paladin. This is really cool. I used to love watching and playing Tempo Paladin, but it really fell off in favor of Secret Paladin. But now people are actually starting to maybe come back to it a little bit, although this is the first time that I'm actually... I think it's the second time that I'm actually seeing just straight up Tempo Tempo Paladin. I saw Murloc Knight when it came out, I was like, oh my gosh, that thing is so broken. Turns out it's not so broken, but if you're playing a tempo deck, you can get a lot of value out of it. So definitely a good card to include if you're trying to go for the tempo, along with uh, you know lots of other death rattle effects for respawns, things like, uh, of course, you're going to have Tyrion, some, uh, some shredders in there as well. Might even include bigger shredders if you're looking for a ton of extra stuff. And I, I was really waiting for more discover mechanics to come in to uh to paladin but looks like uh it's probably not going to include too many of those or any of them now should be seeing the um either the druid i i would have expected the druid hero power to come out there just because it's an offensive hero power but instead um uh, Ice Fox realizes, hey, more cards mean more damage, and he wants to draw into more of those. He's already got two Crackles in his hand, and, uh, okay, this is, yeah, I was going to say, you don't play Murloc Knight on turn four, even though it costs four. You play it on turn six so that you can get uh, stuff like Old Murkai out of it. And there you go, going to be able to clear off, commit to, commit Murgle Gurgle side and kill off his fellow, mm -hmm. apologies, um, and clear off his fellow Murloc. Of course, he's also got two, like, anti-Murloc, like, thugs by, <laughs> beside him. But, oh, actually, whoa, choosing to go for face instead of trading there with old Murkai. I actually really like that decision because he realizes he has other minions on the board. They're going to trade, uh, you know, more effectively. And he doesn't want to lose that four damage to face, which is actually pretty significant. So uh, keep in mind also that if he had killed off... Um, uh, Sir Finley Murgleton, then he actually would have lost damage because Sir Finley counts as a Murloc, so that's actually buffing up old Murkai uh, and making him deal more damage. So instead, uh, Icebox is just going to try to kill him. <laughs> He's like, all right, you're super cool and everything, but I'm just going to kill you. So uh, we'll see if, it, uh, if he's able to. I think the play right here would be to Lava Shock the taunted mini bot and then trade the one three into the zombie chow just to get that healing back sure you lose one point of damage but i think at this point you might need some extra help in the health department uh, depending of course on what your opponent has coming up next turn Looks like we were having a little bit of lag issues, but pretty much exactly what I just said would happen did happen. Uh, we still have a pretty scary board here, and to be fair, this board is a little bit more than pretty scary. It's actually ridiculously ridiculous uh and a couple of things to talk about as far as you know the, the way the matchups go so for the tempo deck the really the the way that you want to play this is obviously just getting little tiny advantages little by little and uh you know getting more and more tempo on board building up to where you can just kill your opponent well one of the things that hurts your chances at doing that uh is things like lightning storm well this version of shaman doesn't Run Lightning Storm, uh, I think, uh, was it 6 oh? Somebody I was watching the other day uh, started experimenting with putting Lightning Storm in their aggro Murloc, or not Murloc, but in their aggro Shaman deck. I don't really know how well that works, but in this case, it'd be a great card to have. However, with the absence of that card and perhaps, uh, or, and no, uh, no Shaman Totem to roll for spell power, there really isn't a big way to clear off this Murloc Knight. You can go ahead and use 
the um, uh, Earth Shock, and that's exactly what he's going to do, but it's actually not going to clear out the... Uh, the Murloc Knight, because all it does is keep the snowball from rolling on old Murkai, and, uh, yeah, this is not, not looking too good for our heroes, uh, if our heroes are Ice Fox. Uh, for Shi Hao, he's actually doing, uh, feeling pretty good about this, because he lost game number one, and is actually gonna go in for game number two, has the lethal, hits it up, and then it's gonna be a tied series, one to one, between Shi Hao and Ice Fox. And what a series. Um, it's always really cool to see the Tempo Paladin return. I was a big believer in it when it came out. Like I said, I was, uh, Murloc Knight was my favorite card. And even still, I put it in some decks that it has no business being in just because it's like, it's infinite value. And to be fair, in like a control matchup, that's the card that really, really wins you the, uh, the game because you can pump out in, uh, not in infinite minions. There we go. I was going to say invincible minions. It's like, no, they're not invincible. It's not something uh, like sil unsilenceable dread steeds. But um, the idea is, hey, you get a lot of value off of those because you can just get cards for free. And even though those cards aren't the best cards in the game, they're still pretty good. And uh, with one sort of aggro tempo deck out, now we're coming into Shi Hao's Face Hunter. It's kind of interesting to see Face Hunter be played nowadays because it feels like if you're gonna play Face Hunter, you might as well just play Aggro Shaman because it's so much better. Face Hunter, every, everybody's like, hey, um, shouldn't I just, um, or the, the, the big reason people started playing Face Hunter was Unleash the Hounds because it was two mana and it was ridiculous. Uh, and it comboed with Buzzard at that time. So Buzzard got nerfed, Unleash the Hounds got nerfed, and so everybody's like, okay, well, we got to play a different version of Face Hunter. Uh, and so that's what we're probably going to see here from Shi Hao. Uh, however, on the other uh, side, Ice Fox from OMG, it's the player on your bottom part of the screen, is uh, running sort of the, the new hotness for aggro decks. And that is um, you know, a deck that relies not just on uh, minions, uh, charge minions early game to just run into your opponent's face, but it also relies on uh, direct damage spell power. So for hunters, they play uh, com uh, kill command, which is either three damage or five damage for three mana. Well, for shamans, they have lava shock, and that doesn't even require a beast. It does overload you, but who cares if it overloads you, if that overload is actually a good thing that pumps up your tunnel trogs, and you can remove it with lava shock so it doesn't even stick. So that's, uh, that's pretty good value if you ask me. Starting to see the power of that uh, direct damage come out. However, it's not necessarily going to la uh, last very much longer because uh, if you just look at the hand size, that's that's kind of the uh, the, the struggle currently for Shi Hao. He's actually playing pretty well. Uh, he knows that his win condition is uh, is pretty much just hit the guy in the face because he has the advantage. Uh, on board, he could even go for playing the uh, or the the tempo loss and playing explosive trap just because it would also kill off everything on board. However, I think he does definitely need yeah, and he is gonna play the explosive trap because he does definitely need to keep the uh, aggression on him uh, on himself. And here we go, or on his opponent, so that his opponent has to work on clearing things or playing defensively, like he just saw there. And there we go. Hello. Uh, I believe we are being joined now by our uh, Chinese translator and co-caster, Shrink. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, just too much ca cast over the weekend. Uh, oh, trying you're to make 
make my body work. Yeah, tell me about it. I was uh, I was feeling some of those struggles last night, so I get to check out last night. Uh, get to uh, maybe come back a little bit earlier tonight, and uh, so we're kind of coming into the middle of Group D. It's actually the beginning of Group D. Uh, this is our first best of five series between uh, Shihao and Ice Fox. Uh, Ice Fox won the first game. Shihao won the second one, and now they are clashing against each other with two of the most aggro decks in Hearthstone. Uh, Agro Shaman versus Face Hunter, and uh, you know Face Hunter is in the lead, and uh, you came in just in time, Shrink, for the game to end. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I haven't got to know uh, what happened before, but uh, usually, actually, what happened in this matchup is actually uh, Face uh, Hunter got out uh, aggro by the Face uh, Shaman, but uh, I guess. Um, Zhao is uh, just uh, doing some some work there. Yeah, uh, Zhao's really been playing very very well. Uh, he dropped game number one. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, yeah, it was um, Reno Lock versus uh, like mid range tempo uh, Paladin, and then uh, game two was tempo Paladin versus. Um, uh, what did he, what did he play in game two? I uh, see. I'm already forgetting now, but. Um, let me go ahead and sync this up so that uh, I'm playing Secret Party. Was it? I'm trying to think. Oh my gosh, my memory is terrible. Uh, I'll look next time they uh, they show the uh, the classes on stream. But um, yeah, that was uh, that was game three. So we've got w at least one more game coming up. Uh, Shihao dropping the first series, but coming back in the next two games. So it's kind of starting to come back. And it was Tempo versus... Uh... Yeah, it was uh, Tempo versus Secret. So there you go. So this time around, we're going to see Combo Druid versus the... Uh, I actually, I think this might be Tempo Paladin 2. Or mid range. Uh, it can, it can, it definitely can be, and uh, it yeah, yeah. There's the be. there's the uh, blessing of kings. So this is going to be mid range paladin uh, for both players. Well, I mean, uh, we've seen um, uh, this kind of thing in uh, mid range uh, paladin as well, just to help you trade more efficiency. Uh, of course, I mean, uh, it could be. It, could be other things we uh, yeah well mini bot you know usually one of the best cards in hearthstone um still good but doesn't really do very well at clearing out these little one ones that keep getting spawned here uh now oh actually gonna go ahead drop the innervate shredder okay shredder super cost effective and you can even pop that divine shield I think he's thinking about just going, you know, YOLO all the way to the face, but probably better to pop that Divine Shield. And okay, there's actually Secret Paladin. Uh, there's some overlap for the cards, and you don't usually see uh, Blessing of Kings in Secret Paladin. Well, I mean, uh, actually, uh, sometimes you can uh, just uh, use that to trade efficiently and see also You can understand as a 4 4 on charge, you just need to. Uh, for the for charge, you need just you need another minion to uh, make it work. So it it just um, follows the whole theme of uh, uh, secret pattern. You just bully your opponent with uh, some uh, super uh, uh, efficient and kind of broken minion uh, and to help you just get an early win there. And we certainly see uh, Ice Fox here, considering that move here. Yeah, so uh, I think the, the, the choices are, do you drop the Blessing of Kings and just run the dude into the face and start the aggro war? Or uh, drop the Shredder and uh, you know save that Blessing of Kings for a little bit later on? Uh, it looks like he's deciding towards Blessing of Kings, but... Uh, I don't know. You could also just double secret hero power, but that, that's a super weak move. So you definitely want to. Uh, yeah, it looks like he's going to be playing the Blessing of Kings. Um, and either. I guess just going straight to face, because if he doesn't. 
then oh, well I um, mean you see uh keep the grove already I mean it's reasonable to go to face and uh, calling on your opponent to uh, take care of you board hmm. instead of Interesting. So instead, he actually just decides to clear out the keeper, uh, which is kind of weird because now he's going to lose more from having his minions swipe than if he had traded into... Uh, I mean, it always feels bad to kill off just one half of the Shredder because you're essentially giving an next minion charge. But this is uh, kind of a, the combo he was working on or waiting on is uh, the... Uh, was it? It's not Repentance. It's... Um, is it right? Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, because he was thinking about, oh, this is a really smart move from uh, Zhao. Actually, uh, actually, he's already uh, thinking it through and uh, he's turning this into a race. Uh, as for us, really biased spot. Oh, uh, okay. I'm not bad. Yeah, you want to turn things into a race? You know what helps you win? If you can just keep your opponent from damaging you. And yeah, there's a there's a light well. So that's pretty good. The downside is that he's down to about 7 oh, HP. BGH right on time. Um, yeah. 50% uh, chance of killing that uh, Mr. Mm, Challenger if uh, the Avenge goes on to the edge. Well, can't you just force the Avenge? To... Oh, no, 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 because you're going to revive the 2-1. Oh. So we're going to see the Noble Sacrifice into Avenge and Redemption, if I'm not mistaken. So he's saying, I want to go there, I want to go there. No, oh, it does go on in the Serious Challenger. Instantaneous BGH, no thought required. Um... The light wall will actually get one uh, oh. get uh, um, competitive. <laughs> oh, the competitive spirit on the light well. I'm not sure that's exactly the kind of value that you're looking for. <laughs> um, is there any chance for Ice Five to survive? I don't think so. His face got frozen, and actually, I think this is one of the reasons that uh, he attack. Uh, his uh, uh, shredder into the Keeper Grow instead of the um, shredder. Uh, yeah, this is lethal. And uh, Zai is moving on to the winner's bracket, and uh, Ice Fox has fallen to the loser's bracket. Yep, 3 1 victory. Ice Fox will uh, be seen a little bit later on. But, uh, of course, that's going to do it for our first series of the night with uh, Shihao taking a 3-1 win over Ice Fox. And that does mean that our next series coming up, 